Hey, what's up guys on YouTube? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial, okay? And this time when I say amazing, I really mean it. I mean, I mean it all the time, but this time, oh man, I really love it, okay? So I'm totally into this plastic materials lately and I was playing a lot, you can see it here obviously and um, I want to share all of these tips and tricks my secret knowledge with you and I think this will just be an amazing tutorial today okay so let's just pause this one because the sound maybe will drive you nuts okay so this is my plan for today you can see man I made quite a lot of renderings here and I want to really share all of these texture setups on my patreon with you just look how amazing this is looking uh, some really advanced mixed materials. Today we are going to talk about these plastic looks, okay, so this bubble wrap plastic foil, I think this is the right word, okay, so just look, oh man, I just want to touch it and uh, wrap it around, uh, I don't know, uh, anyway, I think these are some really amazing materials, okay, so you can see I was playing really a lot with it, also these ones, they just look beautiful, okay, I can go on and on with this, but I think I want to keep this lesson really short and precise, okay? So I wanted to say here on YouTube, you will learn how to make something like this, okay? Oh, just, I'm just amazed how, how great it looks, okay? <laughs> I hope it's okay to be, be amazed by my own work. Um, feels a little bit stupid, but anyway, so I want to share this knowledge with you. Oh man, okay. Anyway, so here on YouTube, you will get like uh, some free displacement map okay so it is basically just this map okay and you can achieve effects like this this or this with it okay you can also get more of these masks on patreon so this is just a small selection i will prepare more and more because with different maps we can create all kinds of cool materials okay so the secret is <laughs> just to to use clever maps in your materials okay but now i want to share this one for free so you can download it on patreon all right and you will also get this scene file with a crazy cartoon character some geometrical objects and these cloth like snakes in it okay so you will just have something cool that you can put your texture on so basically you will get something like this when you press the render button and i think this is just amazing of course there will be another lesson probably on patreon where i share with you how you can model this stuff okay so i mean now i will share it for free with you but i also want to show you on patreon how you can model this garment cloth like stuff i mean i just implemented marvelous designer into my workflow combine it with Cinema 4D and the results, man, they're just amazing, okay? For me, it feels like the logical next step in this uh, whole 3D game, okay? But anyway, I'm rambling too much here, so I think we should just dive into Cinema 4D and um, open up the free scene file. As I said, it will be on Patreon together with this displacement map, and I think we should just have some fun, all right? So let's get this going. All right, one last thing. Today, we are going to play with this abstract snakes here. They are created in uh, Marvelous Designer. I think I already mentioned this. It's just a great tool to create these abstract shapes here. I mean, this is like a trouser and a t-shirt, but you can also make a swim ring and uh, bend it around your objects, make really cool abstract stuff. But of course, uh, let's go over here. Um, you can also create your own garments, keep it more realistic, dress a character and uh, create your own bubble wrap jacket, whatever, your own trousers. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, cool stuff. And if you're also interested in that kind of stuff, man, I can tell you my Patreon is also the right place for you, okay? So I'm sorry, one last thing before we start. So I just wanted to show you here on Patreon 3D Bonfire, you will get the free scene file plus a 4K texture for the bubble wrap plastic foil tutorial, all right? So you can see in the file, there you have these beautiful snakes, okay? They are really high res and look just amazing, all right? And you will get this texture in 4K, so you will have a really solid mesh. It looks just stunning, okay? But if you want to become a Patreon, of course, you will get more of these textures. 
This is just a small selection. I really want to build on that and just want to give you a lot of variation for your materials, all right? And here is a special offer that is just for you who are watching this training right now on YouTube, okay? So these are the different membership levels on my Patreon 3D Bonfire. And to get the whole packet of knowledge 100%, you should go for the tier tutorial nights, okay? It's 16 euros per month. And here is the special thing. If you go annual, you will save 16%. And now let me tell you one thing. All of you who are watching this training right now on YouTube, if you send me a message on Patreon with the promo code PLASTIC, you will get an additional discount of 20 euros, all right? So I think this is quite a good offer for one year of quality training, all right? So let's continue. Finally in Cinema 4D, okay? And when you fire up the Plastic Snake scene file, I guess you will just get like this and this material for the eye, okay? The other ones we will create now together. And you can also see there is an Octane Sky. And in it, when I go to this window, you will see I selected Spruit Sunrise 8K and it's from HIA Haven, okay? So obviously just using one HGI is like a really cheap and simple solution to light your scene. Most of the time, if you want to go really advanced and make it really beautiful, I encourage you to use additional area lights to just make it more individual, okay? But in that case, I just want to go with this one and I think it's already working for us. One last thing, when I go inside of the image texture, you can see I increased the gamma. All right, let me just compare this one. So I store the render buffer, put this back to the standard value of one. You can see I really intensified it quite a lot by just putting in 1.05 and this is like a cheap trick to make your lighting more intense to intensify the, the lighting from your HDRI. All right so I like this one. I will just remove the plastic foil from this snake here and now just go into your camera and I would just encourage you to search for a nice angle here so maybe we want to go with this snake here so I would just try to get like a beautiful angle. Let's see. Honestly, this is the most fun part for me. Okay, so you just go with your camera around your scene. Now I select the focus picker to make this one sharp in the viewport. Okay, and uh, you can see here, this is the aperture. This is the intensity of the depth of field. So when I increase it, it will get like crazy. All right, like uh, this is really subtle. I just go for something like free. I always like to have a focus on my foreground object and um, this just helps. All right. Let me just show you how much fun you can have by going around your scene. Maybe we will find another interesting angle. So let's see. That could be interesting. So let's try to go here. Now you can see and this is totally out of focus. So in my focus picker, I will select the snake again. Now you can see the rotation of the HDRI doesn't really benefit this image. So for example, you could just duplicate it by holding down STRG. Click on this one and let's see if we rotate it around, if we can get another beautiful image here, maybe something like that, that could work. I mean, it's a bit over bright to be honest. So I just try to go for something like this. Honestly, that's not the best angle. So I will just continue to search for another angle maybe we want to have something like this where the snake is coming down here or something like that that could be cool so let's try it once more go into the hdri rotate it until it looks more visually pleasing all right maybe something like that just click on the snake again okay uh, still not satisfied here so i try to put the light from the other side on it okay yeah that could be another angle so you just have to play with the scene and just search for the best angles if you want to be a little bit artistic here. Also, that could be nice to just have a focus on this element. All right, let me try to rotate it once more. Now we have a really nice definition on the, on the wrinkles here. I really like it. Let's see, just like that. Okay, and this is also cool. I just want to encourage you to play with it and uh, search for the best angle. I will go back to this camera because I already liked it. So go back into the rotation parameter and let's see, just make something like that, for example, or, or do we want to have the light from the other side? That looks even more interesting. Okay, so now I think it is time to go into the materials and create some bubble wrap plastic foil. Okay, all right, so this is this object and you also can see we put it into a cloth surface first this will give it additional thickness because when you just leave it at zero this will be like um, just a 
Uh, how can I show it to you? Let me see it. Go inside of it. You can see it. this is an infinite fin object. Okay, so it basically has no thickness. And this is where the cloth surface comes into play. So when I put this one to one, we have like inner and outer shell. And this will also help the shader to make it more realistic. Like this really has some volume and it looks just better. Okay, on top, I put it into a subdivision surface. So without it, this doesn't really look good. So I just put it into the subdivision surface and it is perfectly smooth. All right, finally, the material part, okay? And you can see I already created some materials. So let me just show you this one, for example. All right, that looks nice. How about this one? Oh yes, that looks amazing. How about this one? All right, you look good too. Okay, so now we start from scratch, okay? So just go here and let's start with a specular material okay put the specular onto your snake and let's see what is happening all right so this looks already quite interesting right let me just show you how it will look without the cloth surface okay so now this is like this infinite thin object without a real thickness and this looks just fake i mean it looks like this is filled with some liquid like from the movie abyss for example all right so if you want to go for something like that okay but i would say that looks just more believable put it into your subdivision surface and now we are up for a good start so let's fire up the material editor and if you go to the index you can make the reflections more intense okay so when i put this one to two now we're talking this looks already quite promising right if i go up with it just compare it to this one okay that looks pretty flat so i will go for something like two okay and i think if you go to common i just want to compare this once again store the render buffer and i think when you activate fake shadows i guess there will be more light in your object but to be honest there is no difference you can also leave this one unchecked all right now let's make this more interesting so go into your node editor and i think it is time to fire up an image texture and we just load the 4k texture that i provided for you on patreon all right so i have it here and i mean this is so simple okay but uh, it doesn't have to be complicated right so just go to displacement fire up a displacement and since we want to use a texture for our displacement you just need to set this one to texture displacement it is already set up okay that's perfect just pipe it into the texture input now what is happening here okay this is getting super dark and i think this is a scaling issue all right so first obviously we want to have more details it's a 4k texture so why don't we just choose 4k makes sense right this is really super tiny that's the problem here so that could be confusing so just create a transform input here all right i could make this a bit smaller sorry so like that and i think let's try it with 100 all right that looks ridiculous so i think the height is way too intense so just put this one to 1.5 for example all right i will give it some calculation time and you already can see that looks quite interesting honestly the lighting is too flat so i will just go to my attributes and rotate this one all right so that looks already more interesting and uh, i already like the look here I just want to go closer with the camera so I make a duplicate and maybe I just want to check another angle and once again I will select my focus picker click on the object now I just want to separate this snake from the other one a bit more so i will increase the aperture to maybe six all right and you can see this still looks amazing maybe we want to vary it once more so i will just go with my camera somewhere else all right so i just changed the angle a little bit and the lighting and you can see this will be our plastic foil right now i think the scaling is a bit off so you could go back into your material here all right and change the parameter with the transform okay so if you put this one to 200 for example then this will get way bigger let's just wait for a second all right so you can see where this is going so i mean this looks also quite interesting obviously there is another parameter you can play with that is the height okay of this extrusion so when i reduce this one to um, uh, let's just half it all right now these extrusions they are more subtle obviously you could make it really tiny when you go to 70 for example that also looks amazing now uh, we can also play with the light of course so i think this is just pure fun okay so all right that also looks lovely let's do it one more time just go into the other direction okay now you get this cool reflection here let's see can i intensify it all right so now that looks really nice I'll just go back here 
to somewhere around here. Maybe that's a good point to talk once again about the IOR, about the index. So this is an index of two. Let me just make a comparison and store the render buffer. And now let's put this one to maybe 1.3. And you can see now the way the light is breaking up in these foil chambers here. Now that looks uh, completely different. Okay, so now you get this really nice dotted pattern here. So you know, I really like that. So maybe an IOR of 1.3 is better. Let me just compare it to an IOR of 3. Okay, so now that gets even more like a mirror. So I think the best way would be to go down with the value because now you get this really uh, nice pattern here. Okay, so that looks just amazing. I mean, it looks even better than a higher number, I think. Okay, so this is also working nice. But with two, now that gets more flat. I mean, that also looks amazing. But I honestly would go beneath two to get something like that. I really love it. All right, one more showcase. So here again, I just changed my angle of the light, my camera. All right, that looks amazing. And you can see this time we have a roughness of zero. Okay, so you know what? I will make a store comparison. And now I give it like a really subtle roughness and we compare it once more. All right, so that looks also interesting. But what if you want to have some variation in your roughness channel? between something that is really clear and something that is rough, okay? So in that case, you would go into your material, all right, fire up the note editor once more. And basically you will just select a black and white map. This one is a surface imperfection map from polygon.com. It is called stain liquid generic 0.12. Okay. And if you fire this one up into your roughness channel, then it will look like this. Now we have all of these details in the roughness channel. So the light is broken up more in rough areas then in not so rough areas and you get all of this variation okay honestly i think we can tweak this a little bit so i will go once more into the note editor okay and therefore you can remap these black and white values with a gradient okay so the gradient we just want to intensify this is like a contrast curve on top of it and if we do something like that for example we will get a, a more accentuated roughness <laughs> i hope this is the right english word okay but before I will do that, I will just store a render buffer once more. And now we will compare it with an additional gradient on top of it. Okay. All right. And you can see now the contrast curve is giving us a more concentrated look here. Okay. So some areas are not so rough anymore. So you can play with the gradient to remap the map. If you are just not satisfied with the distribution of the roughness, then just do that. All right. So basically black is standing for transparent areas and white is standing for rough areas. Okay, so this will be a really rough material and this will not be rough. All right, like more transparent. So you can see when I turn this one into some gray value, you will have in all of these transparent areas also some roughness value. Let me just show you. All right, and as I said now, basically almost everything is really rough here. Okay, so it's also interesting, but I really prefer all of the details. So I will turn this one back to black. And of course, now you could also say, okay, in these areas, they are too rough. So I don't want to have this as a white, but maybe as a grayscale value here. And then you again get a whole different look. Okay. All right. And that also looks amazing. And I think I should pay $1 whenever I say amazing today. Okay. So now you learned about the roughness channel and the displacement channel. And of course you can definitely combine both of it. Okay. So just pipe the dotted map back into the displacement and let's just see it one more time how this will look. All right. And once again, I have to say it looks amazing. To be honest, this time I used a different black and white dotted map that is more accentuated to get that spikes. But overall, the principle is the same and you already know where you can get more of these textures, right? Sometimes it's just pure fun. Okay, so that's what I love about 3D. It doesn't have to be complex and complicated Houdini stuff. I mean, you can get these amazing results with just some good taste, some good lighting and some beautiful materials. All right, so we did this one with the roughness. Okay, this is a more close dotted map. Of course, you can also use this texture maps in the diffuse channel to get something like this or even something like this one. Okay. Combine it with a stripes map here in the normal channel. And then, oh man, you can get so many beautiful textures, materials. Oh, the sky's the limit here. Okay. So I think I should end this one. Okay. So 
Thank you so much for your time. It was just a pleasure to share this. And of course, all of this more complex material setups, I will also share this on Patreon. So there will be a lot of lessons to make something like that. I mean, this looks amazing. All right, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, so anyway, I need to end this tutorial now. Maybe consider to subscribe to this channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, all of the good stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. See you next time. Bye, guys.